Test, test, do I have sound? Okay. Today I wanna to talk about my fall sewing plans. So today is September the, what is today? September the 13th. And we've got about a week and a couple of days left of official summer and then fall will be here. If you are new here, my name is Casey and I'm the designer behind Pattern Scout. I kind of started out as a pattern designer. Now I'm running this YouTube channel and you know, the lines between pattern designer and YouTuber are starting to become very blurred. <laughs> but I do really love to sew my own wardrobe and basically just sharing all of the projects that are intriguing me and interesting me at any given moment. And I really love planning my sewing projects. I love it almost as much as actually finishing the sewing projects. It's so much fun to just kind of dig around on the internet or look through some of my patterns or even look through some of my patterns projects and think about all the ways that I want to incorporate those into my seasonal wardrobe. So anyhow, that's what we're going to be doing today. I'm going to kind of go over my process for planning my wardrobe and then I'll talk about some of the pieces that I'm hoping to sew for this fall. Whenever I'm planning to sew for a new season, I spend a lot of time on Pinterest. So I had someone comment actually a while back and they were like, oh, you just assume that everybody's on Pinterest. No, I don't assume that everybody's on Pinterest, but I love Pinterest a lot. I am on it all the freaking time. And I have boards dedicated to the sewing patterns that I sell. And then I also have boards that are just dedicated to general sewing inspiration. And I'll put a link down in the description to my Pinterest if you wanna go check that out. I also pin a lot of recipes and home decor stuff. And I, yeah, I'm on it all the time. I also find quite a bit of inspiration by looking at the websites of stores that I really like shopping at when I do shop for clothing. One in particular that I've mentioned here before on my channel is Anthropology. I just love Anthropology style. It's got this nice eclectic mix of things. I really love how they can style really classic pieces in unique and interesting ways. So I'm on Anthropology quite a lot. I pin a lot of stuff there onto Pinterest. I like looking at places like Madewell and Banana Republic. Banana Republic is actually a store that I shopped at quite a lot before I started making my own clothing. I just really liked a lot of the styles of their stuff. And then Free People, oh, and Reformation. I've seen some stuff on Reformation that I really love. So I'm always kind of keeping an eye out for different stores that kind of cater to a style that feels like it's my style or the style that I aspire to have in my wardrobe. I also get a lot of inspiration from social media. So I used to be on Instagram a lot and actually I hardly ever use Instagram anymore. If you happen to follow me over there, you may have noticed that I never ever post over there. When I first started sewing, I found so much inspiration there and just was like devouring patterns that I would find through the people that I was following on Instagram. Now I have been using TikTok a lot actually and not just for sewing patterns, but I do end up kind of following people that share their daily outfits and find that to be really inspirational and then kind of reverse engineer it to either find a pattern or most often just draft a pattern for myself or take a pattern that I already own and hack it into a style that is kind of similar to this outfit inspiration that I like. I also plan projects around things that I want to share here on the YouTube channel. So a lot of times I'll think, okay, what's something that I think people would be interested in seeing and how does that kind of collide with what I want to add to my wardrobe. So there are a few projects here that I'm going to share today that are definitely fit into the category of kind of trying to show some new techniques here on the YouTube channel, as well as adding something valuable to my existing wardrobe. And then last but not least, I think a lot about the types of seasonal activities I'm going to be doing and how my wardrobe is going to promote and serve those activities for me. I do spend a lot of time at home and working from home. So most of my wardrobe, I want it to just be very comfortable and easy to kind of lounge around in, but things that I feel comfortable going outside and taking the dog for a walk or running a few quick errands around town. So a lot of my wardrobe needs to be very practical and easy, but I also want to feel confident in the clothing that I'm wearing. And I want clothing that fits really well and is comfortable. But I also like to include pieces that are a little bit special so that I can kind of take my wardrobe up a notch when I need to. So my personal style has definitely evolved over the years. And when well, I say it's evolved, I've definitely become more familiar with the things that I actually want to wear and the things that are in my wardrobe. So for example, when I first started sewing my own wardrobe, I made a lot of impulse purchases. <laughs> I would buy kind of weird fabrics or fabrics that had kind of crazy prints that just weren't really, you know, weren't really things that I felt totally comfortable wearing, but I saw them on Instagram or I saw the fabric and I was just very excited and just like went for it in the heat of the moment. I still see fabrics and I'm like, wow, that's such a gorgeous fabric, but I'm like, okay, what would I make out of that? And would I actually wear it? 
uh, maybe not. You know, it might be a little bit too wild and crazy for my day-to-day -day comfort level and my lifestyle, which is mostly pretty casual. And I've also realized over the years that um, I actually like things that are pretty basic and classic. I like things that can be mixed and matched. So I like a very cohesive wardrobe, which makes it a lot easier to get dressed and out the door when I do want to go out in public in the clothing that I made for myself. Okay, so now let's chat about actually what I want to make this fall. So first I'll start with tops. So one of the tops that I really want to make and actually something that I started working on in the spring and then kind of put it on the back burner until now, and I'm going to start working on it very soon, is a knit button up shirt. I've been seeing a lot of these kind of stretchy knit button up shirts everywhere and I love them and it so takes me back to when I was in high school that kind of style was so so popular and I think they look great and I actually want to make one out of mesh but I got two really pretty moody floral mesh print fabrics that I am so excited to work with and I want to do a mesh button-up shirt with a little collar and I think I'm going to try to hack my comfy tee pattern into that I think it'll be pretty easy and then I also would like to make a mesh either crew neck or uh, turtleneck top as well. I think that would be so cool with like a little lettuce edge hem and anyway, and actually I'll show you the fabric that I got. Hang on one second. This feels so 90s to me. I love this fabric so much and it is very sheer. So I would have to wear like a little camisole underneath it so you can see kind of how sheer that is, but it's very stretchy. That smells so good. I've already washed it. So that was one that was kind of a larger floral print. And then this one is like a little ditzy floral print mesh that I got from the same shop. I'll put the link in the description to the shop. But yeah, this again, very stretchy, very sheer, but I think it'll be really cute for the type of top I want to make. And another top that I want to make, this will kind of be um, one that could transition into the spring and summer of next year if I wanted to. But when I was in Spain at the, what was the shirt? What was the top? Uh, what is the name of that shop? Oh my God, this is gonna drive me crazy. Zara, okay. <laughs> so when I was in Spain, I was in Zara, one of their many Zara shops in the area where we were staying. And I saw this really cool cropped cowl neck sleeveless top and theirs was in like a neon green, yellow. It was really, really pretty. So I did find this satin fabric at Joanne Fabrics and it is a polyester, but it's very, 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 it has such a fluid drape. So I think I'm gonna try to make like a bias cut cowl neck top out of this. This will be a little bit more of like a fancier item that I'll have in my wardrobe, but I think it would be really cute with some wide leg pants or even jeans or layered, on, layered under a blazer. And I think it would be something that I could transition into the spring as well. And then I was thinking that if that went well enough that I may end up also making like a bias cut slip dress with a cowl neck. So so yeah, really excited about this. And then another project that I would like to revisit is my vest. So last week I shared all of the things that I made for the spring and summer of this year. And I tried on a vest that I made in the spring that I'd kind of like put on the back burner because I wasn't super pleased with the finishing on it. But the vest is actually really cute. I really like the fit of it. And I mean, really the finishing is the only issue with this particular project I'm looking at. It's like sitting right here. And I also want to sew a couple of baby tees. So I have my comfy tee pattern. I think I want to make just kind of a, a few basic comfy tees, like maybe one that's a crew neck, one that's a scoop neck that I can wear with the vest. I think it'd be really cute with the vest, actually like a long sleeve, you know, fitted t-shirt with the vest over it, maybe some jeans or even with some wide leg pants. I think that would be kind of cool. And um, yeah, and I just feel like tees are, are very basic staples that are just great to have in your wardrobe anyway. Okay, moving on to pants. So I, I love making pants. I love making jeans. And yeah, I have some ideas for pants. So the first thing I want to make is a pair of wide leg pleated trousers. And I've been seeing these everywhere, kind of the looser fit wide leg trousers. I'd like to do some that are a high rise. I've actually got some fabric that is on the way that should be here tomorrow. And I just love that style of pant anyway. I think it just looks so chic, but the ways that I've been seeing it styled lately is with sneakers. And I think it's just a really great way to bring something a little bit more structured and tailored into my more casual wardrobe. So I'm excited to kind of experiment with the styling on that, but I think they could also be really great styled with boots or high heels or something like that to make them a little bit dressier if I ever need a dressy pant, which I usually don't. And I think that the wide leg pleated trousers would look really cute with the vest. It would look really cute with the baby tees and yeah, or even the mesh tees that I'm thinking about making. So I think it would be, I think I need to get some wide leg pleated trousers into my life. 
I also have some fabric coming that I think is gonna be perfect for some twill, like kick flare type pants. So on Anthropology, I see these flare pants all the time that I really love. And I actually really just like a boot cut or a flare style cut pant for myself anyway. I've always liked that type of pant. I think you can wear whatever kind of pants you want, but I've noticed that, you know, I've been seeing less skinny jeans and more kind of boot cut or straight cut or flare or wide leg pants. Really happy to see this because for a while I feel like skinny jeans were just like ruling the fashion landscape when it came to everything that was available and everything that I was seeing. So now I'm excited to kind of work in some different, you know, leg styles of my pants into my wardrobe. And I do have a jeans pattern that I drafted last winter, spring-ish, and I've got kind of like an olive green color coming that I think will be really perfect for those. So I'm excited to do those, maybe put some little patch pockets on the front and give them a little bit of a vintage flair. And I think they'll go with everything else that I'm already planning for my wardrobe. And I recently ordered some <laughs> denim from Core Fabrics. This is my first purchase from Core Fabrics. I've been on their website so many times and wanted to order stuff. I usually make myself a new pair of jeans every year just because I love making jeans. I wear them so much. So I am gonna make myself another pair of jeans when that comes. And the material that I bought has just a little bit of stretch and it is a little bit heavier weight. I think it's like a 12 ounce denim or maybe 11 and a half ounce denim. So I think it'll be perfect for the fall and winter. Okay, so now on to outerwear. So sewing outerwear is one of my favorite things. I love sewing outerwear. It is a way for me to really dig into a project and kind of take time with something. And then the end result is usually just so much fun to wear. And I've, I've made myself so many coats. In the past, when I've sewn outerwear, I kind of took the approach, like I was mentioning before, where I was a little bit more impulsive about the fabric choices or the styles of the outerwear that I was making. This year, I really want to kind of reel it in a little bit and make a few classic outerwear pieces. So the first thing that I would like to make is a twill trench coat. And I actually, I have some fabric here in my closet that is a twill. Um, I'm not super thrilled with the color. I think it's a little bit too yellow, but I did recently order in that same order from Mood Fabrics, another fabric that's like a stretch twill that I think would be a nice fall weight trench coat and would probably have a nice drape to it. So I have been looking at trench coats and I actually started working on a trench coat last spring. It just kind of took me longer than I thought it was going to. So it kind of got put to the wayside, but I do want to go back and work on that. And then in addition to the twill trench coat, I would like to make kind of like a wool kind of blazer style coat or like pea coat or like a wool trench coat basically. I either want to make that in a camel color or like a, I don't know, either a gray or a black. The last few winters I've kind of felt like, okay, I need a coat that's not my puffy coat, which I wear all the time. Yeah, I wear that puffy coat all the time throughout the winter. It's been one of my favorite things to, that I've worn and made, but I need a coat that is a little bit nicer, got some nice style lines to it and, you know, makes me feel a little bit fancier than my puffy coat. And then I also really would like to add another blazer to my wardrobe. So a few years ago, I made myself a Jessica blazer in this kind of marled like tweed wool that I found and I love that blazer. I still wear it all the time. It is a great, great blazer and that's a great pattern too. And they have awesome resources online if you wanna learn more about tailoring a jacket. Definitely check it out. That's Closet Horror Patterns Jessica blazer and I'll put a link to that in the description. But I love that blazer. So I would really like to make myself another blazer that's just a very basic, I keep saying basic. I'm like really outing myself as a very basic person right now. But I wanna make just a very basic black blazer, maybe one that's a little bit oversized to kind of get that oversized blazer coat look, or maybe one that comes down like just below the hips so that it kind of feels like a coat because my Jessica blazer is definitely a little bit higher. It comes kind of like mid hip. It's great, I've worn it a lot and I'll continue to wear it, but I think I wanna add one that has a little bit different style lines to my wardrobe. And so those are the kind of basics of the things that I want to make. I've got quite a few fabrics back here that I need to make things out of. I say I need to, that I want to make things out of, but there might be some that I can use for a few blouses. I have some ideas for some like poppy blouse hacks and Romy wrap top hacks <laughs> that I would like to share here. So those might make it in. But anyway, the ones that I'm sharing here today are my top picks for things that I definitely want to try to get to this year. And I'm trying to keep my list somewhat manageable. I think over the spring and summer, when I did the video last week, I was counting up how many things I made. I mean, it was around 20-ish items that I made last spring and summer. And I think for this list so far, I have, 
let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I've only got ten things on this list that I really feel the most excited about. So I feel like that's pretty manageable, although some of those are a little bit more involved projects, but we'll see. We'll see if I get to everything. And then I thought it would be a good idea for me to give a little bit of an update on Pattern Scout in general. So at the beginning of this year, I was thinking that I really wanted to release more patterns. And so far I've only released one pattern, but part of that is because, actually most of that is because I have been focusing a lot more attention here on the YouTube channel. And that has been going so good. And thank you guys for showing up here and watching my videos and commenting and liking and just kind of being engaged here. It's really been an awesome experience so far. Like I was nervous to start a YouTube channel and kind of put my face on YouTube. And I don't know, it was just kind of unknown territory for me at the time. But now that I've really devoted the time and the attention to it, I've just been feeling more inspired to create YouTube content rather than more patterns lately. Doing the two at the same time is really tough. And um, that's been kind of my biggest challenge with releasing new patterns. Watching my channel grow has been very exciting and it has started providing additional income for me, which is amazing. You know, the types of projects that I've been the most drawn to lately have kind of taken me away from pattern development. And I think that's okay, because I'm having fun and I'm getting to share it here with you guys. Yeah, I just want to continue feeding that passion while I've got it and just kind of roll with it. Anyhow, that is the plan as far as Pattern Scout is concerned. I also am planning some content around, you know, sewing for beginners where I'm showing you guys just the basics because I do get quite a few questions about kind of getting started with sewing. I have a lot of thoughts on that. I have shared a few things about getting started, but I think I could definitely do a deeper dive on several topics and kind of divide it over several videos. So yeah, if there is anything in particular that you feel that you kind of struggle with, whether it's getting started or kind of you know, growing in your sewing practice. I would love for you to share those in the comments and let me know, because I would like to start, you know, making some content that addresses those things. Even if you aren't a beginner and you have some things that kind of stick out in your mind about things you wish you knew when you were a beginner, feel free to share those below and let me know because I will definitely be trying to um, tailor some of the content around those topics um, and hopefully make it interesting and engaging enough, even if you aren't a beginner. Anyhow, I think that's all I have for you today. I hope that was interesting. I hope you enjoyed coming along with me on my fall sewing planning rabbit hole. And I'm very excited about these projects. Very excited to share more stuff with you guys. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being here. And I will see you in the next video. Oh, and if you did enjoy this video and you'd like to see more from me, please be sure to subscribe and hit that little bell icon. That way you'll be notified when I release new videos in the future. Okay, I think that is actually all I have for you today. I will see you in the next video. Bye.